Have you been waiting for an update to Luminar Mobile? Well, it's finally here. Version 2.1.0. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, I'll show you what's new and what's been updated in Luminar Mobile. So without any further ado, let's dive right in and take a look at Luminar Mobile. This is the first update we've had and Luminar Mobile has now added presets, improved the export functions, and I also noticed a couple of portrait tools that have been added sort of on the down low. I've already got the update installed on my iPad. To do that, just go to the App Store on your phone or on your iPad, look for Luminar Mobile and install the update. I've added a few pictures to my favorites. Let's use this one to take a look at the new features. The first thing that you'll notice is that there are two new tools over on the right, Skin AI and Body AI. I'll come back to those in a minute. You'll also notice in the bottom right corner, there are color filters. Previously, this was on the dial on the left. Now it's been moved and presets is on the dial and color filters is in the bottom right corner. I'll come back to those in a moment as well. So let's take a look first at presets. To get to them, just tap this icon here on the dial on the lower left. Now, just like Luminar Neo, you'll see a number of different presets that are pre-installed. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit until I get to the ones called travel. Let's try this one. If you find one you're happy with, just apply it and then you can dial it up or down in terms of the strength using the big dial at the top here. To see the before and after, just hold your finger down on the image and release. You'll notice under the cinematic section, there's actually two that include light leaks. So even though we don't have layers yet in Luminar Mobile, you can add this type of effect using this preset. If you like this one, you can add it to your favorites and then you'll be able to find them at the top here. You can also create your own presets. Let me grab another image and we'll do that. I'm gonna start with one under the travel section, number two here. Once you've applied the preset, you can switch back to the main tools and then you'll notice which tools have been applied using this preset. They're indicated with a dot next to the name of the tool. So any tool that is used, you'll see the dot. So if I want to adjust anything, I can just open that particular tool, change the settings and continue from there. I find this one a little bit contrasty, so I'm gonna dial it back a little bit and give it a little bit of a matte look using a curve, something like that. Then I adjusted the color a little bit, added a bit more of a vignette and lowered the color saturation. Now I can go back to presets and save this one as my own by tapping here. Then when you scroll down, you'll see your favorites and any presets that you've created. If you want to favorite it as well, you can just tap the heart. If you want to turn that preset off, just tap it again. And if you want to delete it, click the trash can. I wish we had the ability to name the presets other than just your and then a number. I'd like to be able to call it grunge or street or something else. Perhaps that will come in a later update. Now let's go back to the library. Remember to save your edits. I'm going to save a copy and then head back to favorites. Let's try it on a different street image. Down below favorites are my presets that I created. And there it is there. You can see the before and after. And as usual, I can go back into the edit panel and make any adjustments that I want here and save it as a preset one more time. So the ability to have and to make your own presets in Luminar Mobile is a great addition. It's one click editing, 
and it really streamlines your workflow for fast, easy edits that are consistent, especially when you have a lot of images from the same type of photo shoot that you want to process to have a similar style. Next, let's take a look at these portrait tools. This is an image of myself that I had done recently, and I'm just going to do a quick crop to get rid of the edges like so. I'm going to come in pretty tight because I just want a headshot. And I'm going to use the eraser tool, which is up here, just to get rid of this white bit here on the square. Then I'm going to head to the new tools. So skin AI. Let's zoom in so you could see my face better. The first slider, which is A, is for amount. So as you bring it up, the amount increases, which is the skin smoothing. You'll notice that my skin is clearly smoother. I think that's a little too much. The S is for removing shine. I don't have a lot of shine on my forehead or my nose, so I'm just gonna bring it up part way. The little tab or button in the middle is blemish removal. You can toggle that on or off. Let me zoom in a little bit more and I'll show you the before and after. Notice that my skin still has texture, so it's not making plastic looking people. This is a good thing. On this next image, let's see what body AI can do. You'll notice that there are two markers here, one for slim, which is overall, so entire body, and the other is for abdomen. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening. It's basically kind of sucking in my dummy. I'm okay with that. So you can slim the whole person and just the abdomen. Again, very similar to Luminar Neo for desktop. So this is me after Thanksgiving dinner and before. Remember, you can do this with the skin and the defects removal and save that as a portrait preset as well. If you need to get a copy of Luminar Mobile or Luminar Neo for your computer, remember to use my discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out. And if you want more Luminar Neo learning, check out my full course. There's over 45 lessons and 17 hours worth of instruction inside the course, and you get my raw files so that you can follow along with each of the tutorials. There's a link to the Luminar Neo course and Luminar Neo in the description area below for you. Let's hop back over to the iPad. The next thing I want to show you is the ability to add a custom sky easier in Luminar Mobile. Let's take a look. I'm going to use this image and let's hop right to sky replacement. We still have the options of choosing a sky that's built into Luminar Neo, but now there's a plus sign right at the top here. Just click it and select your own sky. I'm going to add an image of the Aurora that I took recently in Alberta. We had some great Aurora activity. So I'm going to just place that into this image. Fantastic, right? And now this sky will stay there until I remove it. Let's add another custom one. Let's try this one. I had to reposition it a little bit, but how spectacular is that? And also how easy was it to add a custom sky? As long as you have them in your photos library, in your iPad or your phone, you can add a sky from there as a custom sky here in Luminar and Mobile. There are a couple other small changes that are worthy of noting, such as when you zoom in on an image, there's better editing now. Let's just take a look at Enhance AI, for example. You see that it's instantaneous in updating the preview. Previously, there was a bit of a lag in drawing the image. Now, it's pretty quick. Likewise, when using the landscape tool and adding dehaze, the export problems that we had previously are now eliminated. So you won't get any artifacts on your exported image when you use this tool. 
Overall, the app has had some improvements to speed and usability. So this is great. Less legs, quicker edits. The last thing that we need to look at is the export settings. Now, when you go to share, there are more options. The first option is save to photos, and it does save over the original image. It can be reverted, however, so not to worry. It's not permanent. The next one is save a copy. That's the one I usually like to use. You'll notice the little green check mark shows up indicating that a new image with the edits applied has been saved. You can also share to another app, such as upload to Facebook, for example, or share to another person. So I'm just going to make a post like so. You can also save it as a preset from here. And this is the new part. Save it in what format you want. So now you have the option of JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or the HEIF format. As well, you have the option to lower the quality or crunch the file if you wish to save space on your iPad. Remember earlier I mentioned that the color filters tool has been moved. Now it's in the bottom right corner. You can open it by tapping the name, close it likewise, or right here to the left. It's kind of a toggle on and off. I like to open it to turn it to 100%. Then you can even see the previews by using these little side to side arrows. This one's kind of cool. Close the tool by tapping the name again. Now the cool part is you can actually continue to scroll through the options using the arrow keys without having the tool open. I like this one. So now you can quickly and easily apply the edits, a color filter, save it as a preset, and then apply it on the next image. So let me ask you, are you using Luminar Mobile in your workflow? If so, tell me what you like best about it and what's on your wish list. I'd like to see it have masking for each of the tools and the ability to add layers, such as a texture overlay. What about you? What would you like to see added to Luminar Mobile? Tell me in the comment area below. Let's discuss. Thanks for watching. Have fun with the new Luminar Mobile app. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new videos. Take care until next time.